hello, Hamish. I just wanted to ask, uh, you said in the in the lead up to the national draft that the, the the you were asked a lot about the go home factor and picking SA kids versus interstate kids. Just in terms of ending up with, I think four um, SA blokes at the top of the draft was that. You know, two blokes even, and you went for the SA bloke, or were they the four blokes that you were targeting the whole time? Uh, morning, Max. Uh, obviously, the the Phil thought one was pretty straightforward because we basically had the first pick, so um, he was our man a long way out. Um, once we separated him from the others, sort of about two weeks ago, we made that decision. So um, that was pretty straightforward. Um, he was he was our man, basically pick one. So. That worked itself out pretty easily. It was a bonus he lived around the corner from the club, um, i.e. Brody Smith in his year. So that was um, that was pretty straightforward. Then to Pedler, we had Pedler pretty much pegged from about halfway through the year. If we could get in a position to get him, we wanted to. Um, didn't matter that he was local. Didn't matter really where he came from. We loved the way he played. Um, and it probably actually helped us. He was a little bit injured at the end of the year, but there was plenty of interest. I mean, we were really, really nervous. A week or two to go that someone was going to try and trade up to get ahead of us because we knew Giants liked him, Fremantle liked him. There's a lot of interest from those clubs um, around the same mark as us. So that was a bit of a nerve-wracking wait uh, to get him through. We probably knew about two days to go. We were, we were probably pretty safe, but you're never 100% safe until... They're on your list, so we were wrapped to get Luke. He was a player we basically identified from last year um, playing at PAC that he was a player and the type of player and person that we would love to add to the club. So um, he's obviously been in at PAC boarding and with cricket in, in Adelaide for a fair while um, from Kingston and Mount Gambier. He'd moved up to the city for cricket and footy and school. So that worked out really well for us. And then, um, you know, there was a number of players in that range where Cook was... We had our eyes on a couple of others. A couple got picked before us, but we just kept our fingers crossed and hoped that Cook would get there. And we tried it. Obviously, we did a trade to get up and we did another trade with Port Adelaide earlier in the night, which just positioned us probably a bit better for the James Rose selection. Um, so Cook was the one that we were just wrapped. You know, you always get a little bit lucky sometimes that he slid a bit. Uh, and maybe the fact that he's probably going to perform a fair bit better being in Adelaide was a nice little blessing for us. So that was a bonus. We didn't go in thinking, let's go South Australian, South Australian. We were just going to stay, stay true to the talent order. And, um, you know, wherever they came from, if there was a gap, we would have taken players from other states. But the closeness of some of those decisions helped us in that the South Australians were there and it was pretty close. And we probably got a little bit lucky with Cook getting through to us. I'll let the others go into depth on anything from the draft last night. Just one more for me on the pre-season draft now. Can you talk us through and the fans that are confused, just in layman's terms, the, the Bryce Gibbs selection, how that works for the Crows? Look, it's more of an administrative thing. So Bryce to come on now under AFL rules, TPP, et cetera. So he'll come on now and then in the new year, he'll go back off the list and retire as he already had retired. And that'll give us free up a spot for the SSP period where we'll, we'll have a player or a couple of players in to train. We'll have a look at them in the new year. They'll come and train with the club um, with a view to putting, um, if those guys perform well, one on before the season starts. So it was always our plan to keep at least one spot open. Given we took five picks last night, we couldn't take a live, um, a live rookie pick because we didn't have any spots available. So Bryce will come on from administrative purposes. Then he'll go off again, retire off to the Panthers in his uh, new job and we're pleased for him and, and that'll be good for Bryce. And then we'll hopefully add a player through that pre-season period. We'll get someone or two, one or two players in to train and have a look at them. So there's nothing that prevents Bryce doing a sandful pre-season with no. not the Crows or anything like that? No, no, it's purely from an administrative rules, AFL, TPP and salary cap point of view. So, um, yeah, it looks, it looks a bit awkward and interesting, but there's nothing in it. Cool. Thank you, mate. Just going across the top of my screen here, in no particular order, guys. Um, Matty Turner. Sorry, was that me, Matt Smith? Yeah. Matt Turner from the Advertiser was next up. Oh, tonight. sorry. You're right. Hey, Hamish, how are you going? Morning, Matty. Just uh, following on a little bit from um, Max there, will it be a, a best available situation with, with um, the player that you take 
with that spare list spot on the rookie list, or will it be a list need? What what will be the case there? Yeah, it'll probably it'll probably be a target. Well, it will be a targeted position um, selection in an area of the ground that we we'd like to get some help, which I'm not going to tell you now because I don't want the player to get knocked off by someone else. But um, yeah, that'll be a targeted um, one to help the coach in the list. And have you already got players in in mind with that? Uh, given um, given you're talking before the start of the season. Yeah, now we've got a player that's already committed to come over and train, so um, we'll. We'll uh, we'll work with him through the Christmas period, and then he'll be in the new year, and you'll you'll be made aware at the time. But I'm not going to go into who it is now. No worries. And, and just another, one last one for me: um, to be able to get Ball Lace and New Church without uh, having to match a bid uh, for free today. Essentially, you must be stoked with that. Obviously. Both offer something a little bit different. Another two South Australian kids and, and two more bright prospects for you. Yeah, obviously um, they're our NGA players and we know them well. They've been working mm-hmm. in our program. Um, you know, we knew there was risk. That they could get picked in the national draft and certain scribes had them going in the first round and the second round and rated really high, but obviously they got through the draft. So, um, you know, when they get to the club, they're on an equal footing. doesn't matter if you're Riley at pick two or... James and Tariq at pick 102, everyone's equal. So we're pleased to get them through. Was, there was some risk involved, but we're also confident. We had information that obviously you guys and other people didn't have that they probably would get through. So, um, you know, that, that's that's where they're at. And um, we're pleased to have them in. And it's a, a testament to Mears and the guys in the NJ and the work they've done. So they'll come in equal, the same as everyone else. Do you suspect either of them are a chance to... To, to play next year in terms of pushing on to uh, oh, well. getting a spot? James has, James has played league footy at Sturt, so that should suggest he'll be a valuable member of our sample team if he starts there early on. But no expectations, no limitations. Who knows? We often see rookies play early and guys that are picked early need a little bit more time. So horses for courses, Nixie will work that out. And Tariq's only been up really in the city full-time for one year, so... Um, He's he's got some talent and some exciting attributes, and he's got some things to work on. So you know, and that's the case given where they fell in the draft. So um, we'll just bring those guys along gently and help them um, improve as as much as they can. No worries. Thanks again, Hamish, for that. I suppose the other thing to your point, Matt, is to add Hately at no cost with those two boys is a bit of a win for us. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, good point. Call cool. um, Matty Smith from the ABC. Yeah, a couple of questions for you. The first one is whether you considered Poulter at that Berry pick. And, and the second question would be, do you think you've got enough in hand for a pretty good draft next year? Um, we considered lots of players, Matt. So, um, yeah, we obviously did a lot of work on, on Caleb and we wish him well. He's gone to a good club in Collingwood. So, um, But we're wrapped to have Sam Berry. He, he's going to add a lot to our midfield, can play forward. He's tough. He was well performed as a 17-year-old. So, um, you know, he's played senior footy in the country as a, as a kid. So we're really pleased to add Sam. He's a player that we've had our eye on for a long time. So we, we did consider um, lots of players in that pick, but we were pretty much confident that if we could get Sam Berry through to sort of a pick in the 20s, we probably didn't think we could get him past 30. So um, we always had him pegged at that sort of mark. And about your, um, your pretty strong hand, do you think you've got enough of a strong hand for next year? Um, we probably would have liked to add a little bit more future and we gave a little bit of future up, but we can always use 2022 to get into 2021. So, um, yeah, we'll have to have a look at that. It looks a good draft next year. So, you know, you'd always love a bit more. I always want a bit more, but sometimes you can't always get what you want. But, um, you know, we'll have an extra year with these guys in now before we get to next year's draft and, and it does look a good draft. So we'll work at some ways to try and get some more stock for next year's draft. Thank you. Larkin, AAP. Thanks guys. Can you hear me? Okay, Hamish. Yeah, yep, got you. Yeah, great. Um, I'll just ask about Riley. I mean, obviously you're convinced about his football ability, but I guess just his temperament, I mean, the club's highest draft pick and um, the pressure that's going to be on him um, from the from the punters. Um, what gives you confidence that he'll that he'll cope with uh, cope with all that attention? You watched him play. 
Not a great deal, no. no uh, I've watched him a lot, so I'm very confident. Um, we've seen him go against men. He's handled being, you know, the best, uh, if not the best couple of South Australians all the way through his junior career. Uh, no doubt about his temperament. And he's a hard worker. So when you do the work and you're prepared to train hard and be as well prepared as you can, it gives you great confidence that you can handle it. So, um, you know, we, we've got no issues there with that. I mean... There's pressure in AFL footy. It doesn't matter what state you come from or where you are or what pick you are. So there's pressure in AFL footy and Riley's ready for it. Um, he loves a challenge and he's up for the challenge. So he'll get some great coaching. And we know with his attitude and his athletic attributes, as well as his competitiveness, he'll be as ready as he can be. Um, we'll, we'll get his groins right and he'll be ready to go. So when, when you say ready to go, is he AFL ready, ready to play or...? Oh, well, the training and the pre-season will determine that. Um, sometimes, obviously, it takes the big boys a little bit longer, but he's played senior footy for two years. Not many not many tall boys play as a 17-year-old and perform well at sample level. So he's had as good a grounding as any uh, to be ready for it. So I'm sure when he gets the base and the pre-season done and um, gets the work under his belt, he'll be putting his hand up for selection. Nice. Thank you. Cheers. Will from Channel 9. G'day, Hamish. Thanks for chatting, mate. Um, hey, Will. You, I think between the draft, the rookie draft, pre-season, bringing guys in, you've got about eight South Aussies um, in this kind of off-season period. I mean, how how much of a foundation do you feel like you're setting for the club's next run into finals with so much local young talent in one hit? Uh, you know, I think the emphasis, yeah, it's great to bring locals in because it's easy to settle them at the club and some can stay home and some don't have far to move. But um, it's not that much different from, from bringing Hamill and Jones and Shoal and um, and those guys in. You know, Darcy Fogarty came from the country, was a boarder. Um, you know, Peddler will come from but the boarding house and a bit of Mount Gambier into Adelaide. So, look, it, it helps. And, you know, now we've got a large portion of our list from South Australia, but we've been to three drafts um, now and brought plenty of young players in. So those guys are going to grow together. Um, whether they come from Tasmania or Glenelg, doesn't really matter. Um, good characters, good guys, good players, good talent, young group growing together with a really positive coaching group. So um, that's exciting for the future. Um, mate, you said a few days ago that it was down to about four picks. I mean, was that a little bit of smoke and mirrors or was it still just a little bit of kind of just making sure you hammered the exact right selection there? No, it was and it had to be because we didn't get all the medical information until about two days to go. So we didn't want to make a call until all that was complete just in case there was a hiccup. So it was a little bit of being prepared and covered just in case something went a little bit awry. But... Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, once once we um, you know, had all the information to split them, Riley was our man um, and we were pretty clear on that. So, But given the medical information, it took about, you know, we probably knew with about five days to go that he, he was our man. Just last one from me, mate. Did you end up getting any offers for that number one pick or that, were, there, were you tempted at all to make any other trades into the top ten or anything like that? Uh, we, no, no offers. Um in, in the draft uh, process last night for pick one. We obviously made a couple of moves we, and we tried another couple of moves to get into the future. Um, if Cook had a fall and we probably would have done a trade to get back into the future, but we hung on for grim death and got him through to us. So that worked out really well. I mean, always on live trading on draft night, there's probably, you know, 10 trades that nearly get done. We did a couple couple that were pretty close but nothing of major significance like um you know a top 10 pick or anything like that it was more about futures and trying to slide up and down and position ourselves so the port adelaide trade helped us get in a position to get row the bid for jamara helped us get in a position to get row we got up a little bit um with a couple of our picks so um yeah nothing major but a couple of fine fine tuned ones that the guys got onto which allowed us to get in position to get the players that we wanted to.